Hey, what's up, fellas? What we're about to see here today is something that I would have never have thought possible had you had told me about it a couple of years ago. I would have told you there's no way you can get one megawatt of power out of a barbecue grill propane bottle. Yeah, sure, it's only gonna last a few minutes, but that's not the point. We're just using it to test this burner and show the concept of liquid propane injection. Okay, we're starting off at about 110 PSI. This is liquid injection. All right, fellas, so in this test, the main reason for doing it was to observe the effects of moving the six barrels forward five millimeters because at lower settings we were getting too much back burn back towards the plumbing and some of the thread sealant was getting burned up so I didn't like that so we've moved it forward and now it's generating a very strange oscillating pattern like some kind of shock diamond effect like it's almost trying to put out shock diamonds or something but not quite very freaking cool I wish you guys could see what I was seeing in, in real time, but the uh, performance of this thing is phenomenal. That's the vaporizer box right there where the liquid propane is injected. This is similar to a hot air balloon system without the coiling. There's a really good look at the reverberation or whatever that is. Sometimes it will stop and back up, and I think maybe the frame rate of this camera is helping capture it a little bit better because it certainly isn't that visible with the naked eye. It's, it's a little bit crisper, it's more like that. But you can see these subtle bands moving. Sometimes they'll hover in place, and then all of a sudden they'll start oscillating forward like a conveyor belt. There's a little bit of frost on our vaporizer box. So there's a little bit of fire and ice for you there. You can see it's still coming out of that uh, box a little bit cold, but we're not shooting any liquid out yet. I don't have this thing turned up anywhere near as high as it can go in this clip. This is a fairly moderate setting. And the discharge aperture of this burner can be changed by placing fire brick in front of it. You can make it just a little bit smaller, more of a rectangle, a smaller rectangle, but not too much. You can do it a little bit. That's one of the next tests I may try, but I'm only gonna do that if the customers decide to pull the trigger on this thing, because I'll be having to make a lot of them if, they, if I do. But Wow, is that awesome. I couldn't be happier with how well this thing burns. I was worried it was gonna be like a big, stupid, lazy flame. But even at a right angle, it's a very stiff flame and it's almost 100% vertical there. We're not losing hardly any propane pressure. And anyone who's ever used one of those weed burner torches to melt ice or anything knows that when it's this cold outside, you cannot maintain bottle pressure. We got so much pressure here, we're spraying out liquid propane. So we are overworking the vaporizer just a little bit. This tells me that in a future design, it wouldn't hurt to double the size of this thing to ensure that doesn't happen. And the reason I don't like the liquid propane spraying out, it, it doesn't inhibit performance or anything. It's just that it's pulling less air when it does that. If we were to vaporize all of that propane, we would have a much higher pressure in that box, I believe. I could be wrong, it may be the same, but uh, I have a tendency to believe that to be the fact. And also that liquid propane can start to freeze up the air tubes with condensation. Man, this thing is just a beast. It's ready to make some bricks, son. So that's what we got, guys. I had to do one more test. And I uh, wanted to try out those coiled uh, fuel lines to kind of help adjustments. I could probably adjust that with everything attached now just by turning bolts and those stainless steel coils ought to uh, receive the stress without putting a kink in the line. So that's where we had on the Thunderbolt burner. This thing turned out pretty freaking phenomenal. I couldn't be happier. We're still maintaining quite a bit of pressure. It's only dropped that little bit because this tiny bottle was not full when we started. It only had about 11 pounds in it. And this is a 20 pound propane bottle. A Little bit of ice forming on top of the vaporizer box. And we are now out of fuel. You can see the fire is leading off of the tubes. And she's done for. Pretty nice though. I'm very happy with the performance of this thing. 
it worked out great. That nozzle end could also be made out of a silicon carbide, like, divergent tube, or with it, it'd be a convergent tube, I'm sorry. So that's still shooting a little bit of flame back when it's on super low. So moving this stack forward definitely helped all that backfire we were getting. And uh, some very strange combustion oscillations were taking place. You can see ribbons oscillating outside the flame there. Nothing's getting red hot. And as you can see there, see those, uh, those colors, the blues and yellows? The yellow indicates we've only hit a temperature of about 450 Fahrenheit. And that blue right there is around 600 degrees. So we're doing real good on temperature in there. All right, fellas, so in four minutes and 39 seconds, we burnt 11 pounds of propane in this thing. And that comes out to 3 million BTUs. So in kilowatts, it's about 800 some kilowatts right around 1,100 horsepower if you were to do the thermal equation. But this thing's gonna be hooked up to a pretty big uh, LP supply, so I don't think we got anything to worry about on that end. It isn't meant to be efficient. It's meant to take the place of a bunch of coal that was initially heating the bricks in the brick kiln. So it does have a strange buffeting to it. I don't think it's a problem though. I'm gonna um, probably try one more setting, but it's amazing to me that just moving those barrels about five millimeters forward has definitely caused a difference in functionality. It, um, it runs way better at lower settings now. You don't have to have it on high to keep all that fire from shooting out the back. So that's the reason why I did the adjustment. If uh, you guys decided you didn't need to run this thing in the brick kiln, on the highest setting it has, you can turn it down by quite a bit and it'll still work just fine. So I'm pretty much done with this thing. You're not gonna see it again for a while probably unless Anand has me do some more testing for them because it just burns up too much propane to be messing with it too much. This is an industrial burner. It's not made for just kind of messing around with, but you can see here on the low setting it does Pretty well. I definitely like it. I believe all that color we're getting is from the Mercaptan and the oil that we've seen in my other videos that you can get out of propane. Because we have that bottle inverted, all the gunk that was in the bottom of there is definitely being burned. So hopefully that doesn't cause a problem down the line. You would definitely want to run this on a pretty uh, good propane system. And it might even help to have an oil separator. I'm not sure how good that stuff separates out, but definitely getting a lot of power out of this thing. I'm very happy with how well it ran. And I got some highlights that uh, we could check out here and some close-ups. So isn't it crazy how a lousy five millimeters of movement on those Ventura barrels caused that much of a difference in the flame profile. So the vaporizer box is being put to work, man. That thing is just barely doing its job there, but it's this thing's going to a desert in India, so it's gonna be like 120 degrees on a cold day. So I don't think we're gonna see any frost on this thing when it's put to work in India. It's gonna be uh, shining nice and shiny just the way they like it over there. I chromed it out for you, Anand. I hope you like it, brother. <laughs> so that's uh, where we are. We could do so uh, discharge like uh, testing on the size of the discharge with some other fire bricks. I wanted to make it more of a ribbon flame by putting a brick on the top and on the bottom, but I don't think we're gonna get to that. This thing's burning up so much propane. I gotta get more input before I do a test like that. So that's liquid propane spraying out of there. We don't want it to do that, but it's okay. And I don't think that's gonna happen in hotter conditions. It's freezing cold outside, literally ice on the ground right now. So this thing isn't uh, getting that extra help that you would normally have from the ambient temperature of being in a hot desert on a sunny day. But it does get pretty cold there at night, I imagine. So the oscillation ribbons are pretty freaking cool on this flame. It's not just a static deal. 
I would imagine it would run different when you shoot it down inside the brick kiln. This thing's gonna be pointing downward, guys, shooting directly downward, most likely. Maybe not, but I made it to be able to do that. So that's kind of where we are with this. It looks to me like it's pumping plenty of air. It looks like the thing has a freaking blower hooked up to it. That The end of that flame feather is not facing upward at all. So I'm very happy with that. That's uh, definitely what I wanted to see. So I'm shutting up. I'm out of here. You can tell we're out of fuel. See the flame is now attached to the mixer tubes and we're dropping quick. So there you are, Ainan. Let me know what you think, guys.